So we are now in part three of the book, uh, maybe part two. Uh, basically, this is the part where we talk about the statistics. So the first thing we have to do in statistics is to summarize the major data. So we'll talk about basic probability statistics concept, CDF, PDF, PMF, and so on and so forth. So this is your first lecture in statistics and then go on from there to summarize, how to summarize by a single number, whether to use mean, median, mode, arithmetic mean, geometric mean, harmonic means. Then how to take a mean of a ratio, how to summarize variability, and how to get the distribution. And for the whole part three, actually this is summary of the whole part three, we will talk about how to report the performance of a single number, which is this chapter, and how to measure the variability, how to interpret the variability, then later on in the other chapters we'll talk about how many measurements are required, how many simulation results or how many measurements you need to get the confidence. And then how to summarize the results of several different workloads or how to compare two or more systems using different workloads. And then what model describes the relationship between two variables and how good is the model. So there are some of these questions that we'll answer in this whole part three. So let's go into the, some basic fundamentals of base, um, probability and statistics. And most of you probably already know this, but we are just going to take you through this so that um, so that you can just reason away. Basically, you you can get, you can get up to, up, updated on you know what you had learned some time ago. The first thing we sometimes use is independent events. So two events are called independent if occurrence of one does not in any way affect the probability of the other. Okay? If you have thrown a coin once and it came out head, if you throw it one more time, is the probability of head higher or lower? For a fair coin, it's, it doesn't matter. Right? So those are independent throws. And um, price of a stock on successive days. Now that could be argued those are not independent because suppose the price went up today of a stock, that's any company name X, you can say, price went up today. Um, now, depending upon some more information that you will need, you could probably guess the price will go up again or go down again. If there's no information, then most likely it will go down because these things just oscillate, right? On the other hand, if there is some big thing has happened, they've just announced the iPhone 5, so it's going to go up more tomorrow, <laughs> you know. So, so those are not independent events, right? So we know what is an independent event, what is not independent. Independent event is that if knowing one doesn't help the other, whereas dependent means you know, if you know one, maybe you can make a better decision about the other. A random variable. A variable is called random variable if it takes a one of a specified set of values with a specified probability. So it can take many values and um, for each value we can specify a probability. So for example temperature. So what is the temperature right now? Um, if I asked you in centuries what is the temperature, that's probably a random number because it depends upon where you measure it. You measure it 100 places. Some places it will be 43, some places 44, some places 45. So we can specify a distribution that the values are you know, between 43 and 45 with this probability distribution, whatever that is. Temperature, execution time, these are all you know, random quantities. When you have something random, then you have to specify one of the two things. You could specify the cumulative probability. So what is the probability of x being less than some value? That is called the cumulative distribution function. Probability of x being less than a is called fx of a, and it is always capital F. So if a is minus infinity, nothing can be less than minus infinity, then x, then the, that is zero, and nothing can be more than plus infinity. If it is plus infinity, then it is one. So the probability, the cumulative distribution function always starts at zero and always ends at one. Now it doesn't have to start, x doesn't have to start at zero. What starts at zero? The y, fx. 
right? X could be a positive number, could be a number which can be negative, and could be a minus infinity, right? So that part is not bounded. What is bounded is the vertical, this CDF, y-axis. This one always starts at 0 and always ends at 1. On the other hand, if you take a differential of this, and you get a curve, that is called the density function. The density function, the way to interpret is that you really can't interpret it much other than that this is a slope of this curve. So if you take a slope, that is the value you are plotting here. But if you were to take a small strip from between x and delta x, x plus delta x, area under that, in that strip is the probability of x being between x and delta x, a and delta a, whatever, right? So this is the number that you need is basically what is the area of the strip? That area of the strip is the probability of x being in that range. If you take the whole area under the curve, that will be the probability of x being from minus infinity to plus infinity and that has to be always 1. So the area under little fx is always 1. The area under capital fx is not 1 because the area has no meaning here. Okay? Capital fx goes from 0 to 1 and it's really the absolute value that makes sense. Here, it's really the area under the curve that makes sense and so the area under the curve, so it can basically be any shape here, but basically the area under the curve is what we are looking for. Little f. This is probability density function. Now here you think, this is called CDF and this is called PDF and just to be just to be clear, we write PDF in lowercase. So when you see P, lowercase P, lowercase D, lowercase F, PDF. And we write CDF, we write it in, well, I don't know that everybody does it, but anyway, so I, I, I would stop right there, okay. Anyway, so given a PDF, you can calculate the probability of X being between X1 and X2 by taking that strip, and that strip would be basically taking the value at X2, capital F at X2 and capital F at X1, and the sum of the difference of those two are taking the area under the curve of Fx. So all this is saying is that if you want to get the total probability of between X1 and X2, you do the integration to get this area, or you read the two values, X1 and X2, and take the difference in the CDR. On the other hand, if x is not a continuous value, if it is not continuous variable like here, then you cannot have a continuous graph here. If x is discrete, that means it can take only certain values, then what you need is a bar chart, right, even for probability. And that bar chart is called probability mass function. Probability mass function simply tells you what is the probability of x having that value. So x could have value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 10, or whatever. So the probability of 1 is this, probability of 2 is this, and there is no intermediate point. So for discrete variables, we have PMF, probability mass function. If you want to have cumulative probability, so you want to say what is the probability of, first you want to say what is the probability of x being between x1 and x2, so between this and that, you have to add up those values. You have to add up all the values between x1 and x2. And so you can define the cumulative distribution function like that. So the cumulative distribution function will have jumps. It will be some value, and then it will jump to another value, and then jump to another value. Okay? So there is a PDF and PMF, and there is a CDF. So here is an example. This is the response time is uniformly distributed between 1 and 3 seconds. So 1 second and 3 seconds, uniformly distributed means constant right here between the two. And so it is f of x, little f of x is half when x is between 1 and 3. And now you can see that the, this is height is half and the width is 2, 1 and 3, right? Width is 2 and therefore the area in the PDF, area under the PDF is how much? How much is the area here of this? rectangle 1 because this width is 2, height is half. So the area is 1. If you were to plot the CDF, which is the cumulative distribution function, then you will just basically it will be a straight line like this 
it is 0 up to 1 and then it goes up to 1 right at 3 and so between here this slope is equal to half capital fx you can obtain by integrating and integration of constant is the line so basically you get that um, what else so this is an example of CDF PDF um, we move on to let's do the mean the mean is the, called EX expected value and that is actually just the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity of x times fx dx. That is the mean. In case of discrete variables, we just take the probability times the x. For each value, we take the value and the probability, and then we add up from minus infinity to plus infinity, whatever that is, right? So that is the mean. Variance is the expected value of x minus mu whole squared. And so that is x minus 2 whole square times fx dx or in case of discrete variables pi times x minus mu whole square. Coefficient of variation is simply, uh, so standard deviation is simply the square root of variance and, and the ratio of the standard deviation to mean is called coefficient of variation. Okay, And these are very standard symbols. Sigma is for variance, sigma square is for variance, sigma is for standard deviation, mu is for mean and so on. All right. So uh, I hope that you have heard all of this before and uh, I would really appreciate if you read the chapter, this chapter by yourself and um, even do some of the exercises in the back by yourself and so that um, you are up to date on all the probability stuff because we will be talking probability quite a bit. All right.